amongst two individuals or two groups of Muslims, how should we deal with them? Sometimes, ikhwati fillah, reconciling or fixing a relationship or taking care of issue may need only two members. Other time may need a group of people. Other time may need force people with well with, with weapons and army. And listen how the ayah was also re, this ayah was revealed. كما في صحيح البخاري ومسلم يقول أنس بن مالك أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه said people came to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and they said يا رسول الله Listen to this. Ya Rasul, law atayta Abdullah ibn Ubay. They say, Ya Rasulullah, maybe it would be better if you go and talk to Abdullah ibn Ubay. Now, let me give you khalfiyat or the back story, the reason about this, the background of this. Abdullah ibn Ubay was the man that Aus wal Khazraj agreed to appoint him the king of the city of Medina before the arrival of the messenger of Allah. Now imagine, and you can put yourself in his position, but don't be a munafiq like him. Now look, the people of Scarborough and the people of North York, they all got together and they agree and they all vote for you to be the king of these two people, two groups. And not only that, as a matter of fact, now they working on your crown, to crown you as a king. And all of a sudden, Abu Nuh comes from, you know, Mississauga, he's been kicked out of his city because of his message of Islam. And we welcomed him, and we forgot about you. If you're not true mu'min, you would assume that Abu Nuh, he took something that belonged to you. Am I right? He took your authority, he took your status, he took your kingdom. So when Rasulullah came from Mecca, the Ansar, they forgot about Abdullah ibn Ubay. So he did not accept Islam. So the Ansar, they said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, we, we know what happened with him. He didn't accept it. Why don't you go and see him? Why don't you go and see him? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam wa rakiba himara. He went riding his donkey. فَانْطَلَقَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ يَمْشُونَ مَعَهُ and the Muslims start going with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. He's the messenger of Allah and he's going to meet a very important individual. But the land where Abdul, when Abdullah ibn Ubay was staying, it was dusty. It was not, you know, you know hard land, solid land. It was ashy and dusty. So when Rasulullah and the Sahaba came, where Abdullah ibn Ubay was sitting, the dust that, was, that came with them reached Abdullah ibn Ubay. Abdullah ibn Ubay, he covered his nose and his mouth, and he said to the Messenger of Allah, إِلَيْكَ عَنِّي وَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ آذَانِي نَتْنُ حِمَارِكَ He said, get away from me. Wallahi, the smell, or move away from me. The smell of your donkey bothered me. That's disrespecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the extreme level, one of the Ansar, radiyallahu anhum, one of the Ansar said, Wallahi, the Himari Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam atiyab rihan mink. Wallahi, the smell of the donkey of Rasulullah is better than yours. You stink more than the donkey. Ansari, Yudafi'. But a man from the tribe of Abdullah ibn Hubayya ibn Salul got upset. 
You know, Hamiya, sometimes because it's from your people, I oh, have to fight for Somalis, have to fight for Yemenis, have to fight for Pakistanis. You know, they my people. That my, I have to fight for Guyanese. You know, they are mine. You know, Hamiya and Jahiliya. Especially when the person is fresh in Islam or new to the deen, or his iman is not that solid. Akhlatul Hamiya. And he responded to the Mansari who defended Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a very rude way. And then the Sahaba, the people from the both tribe clashed. And they start fighting. First fight, verbal fight initially. They start throwing things at each other. And then first fight. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا If two groups of mu'mins fight, then we can solve that which is between them. Now, الإصلاح يا إخوتي في الله ذات البين To reconcile and fix the relationship between two individuals is one of the greatest deeds that you and I can, account, can, can do. Better than the salawat, better than the fasting, and I'm talking about the nawafil and the sunnah. Better than that. If you sit here and say, I'm going to do i'tikaf, the last 10 days of Ramadan, and someone says, well, I'm going to break my i'tikaf, I'm going to fix the relation between these two individuals, he by far won more reward than you. Even though you were sitting there reading Quran, Salah, mashallah, listening to lectures, but he gained and won more reward than you can imagine. Because the brotherhood in Islam more it means more than anything. Ummah Darda Sughra, I assume, narrated from Abu Darda that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال, أَلَا أُخْبِرُكُمْ بِأَفْضَ الْدَرَجَةِ مِنَ دَرَجَةِ الصِّيَامِ والصلاح والصدق. Shall I tell you a daraja, rank, a level better than salah, siyam, and sadaq? قالوا بلا يا رسول. Say يا رسول. Tell us that we want to do that thing. That if we do it, we can defeat the person or beat the person with a lot of salah and a lot of sadaq and a lot of zakah. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إصلاح ذات البين to fix and reconcile the relationship of two individuals and then he added وفساد ذات البين الحالق he said and to ruin relationship between two individuals is الحالق الحالق is the thing that shaves أو أو كاتس يعني ما تحلق الشعر. Now, سبحان الله. Because you spoil a relationship between two Muslim, you cause unlimited fasad. Unlimited fasad has no limit, and that individual should be put in place because if today he they were the victim. Of that individual, tomorrow they're going to be the victims. The day after, so what is he going to do in the society? He start keep killing relationship after relationship after relationship. And I told you what happened that night in the Taraweeh. The man who killed the relationship between husband and wife to the point. How many of you were here when I was telling that story? To the point that the husband killed the wife. Yani subhanallah. For those of you who are not here, a good number of you were not here. A young man, alhamdulillah, and it was the news. A young man in Saudi, from a decent practicing family, married a young lady from decent practicing family. But one problem. These two young couple living together, going to work, coming back. MashaAllah, can't wait to see his wife. 
Every day, mashallah, she gets ready for him. She's a beautiful wife. She's a nice sister.